Hello, plant community. Thanks for tuning in this channel. My name is Pam, and today is Pest Go Away Day. So, you guys, I've been just putting chore after chore on my imaginary list that's continuously growing as we grow in this growing season. And the pest that I've been having the most problem out of, you guys, literally has just been mealybugs. They have just been the bane of my existence this growing season and I've been trying my best to stay on top of it but every once in a while they still pop up here and there so I have a few plants you guys that I just want to knock off my list I saw a couple of mealies here and there I don't want it to get so out of control to where I have to have a difficult uh, decision to make as far as possibly cutting back um, my plants so I'm just gonna bring you guys along and we can just talk about whatever so if this seems like something that you're interested in and you haven't subscribed to this channel make sure you subscribe before you leave and thank you so much in advance so all right guys i'm gonna um, change the camera angle so you can actually see what i'm doing and yeah let's go and i encourage you guys to have do some chores so maybe this is motivation enough that you need to do the things that you need to get done for your plant baby so yeah see me down here okay I feel like this is going to be the best angle we're going to get in here. I'm um, just going to jump right into it. I have uh, my scissors that I do plan on cutting. I saw one leaf that is dead. And this is just my alcohol Dawn dishwashing liquid uh, solution. Um, I don't think I have any Clorox wipes, so alternative here. Uh, let's see so I'm gonna start with this one since I did just sterilize these scissors this is my Hoya cow bang and I saw that it had a mealy bug on there and it's starting to destroy or damage my leaf so I really got to be on top of it so I'm gonna oh, I didn't even have to cut it just yeah this thing had mealies on there y'all can see the white tips they are super annoying so I have this base in here and again you guys usually I do this off camera and sometimes I'll put like a whole lot of small plants in my uh, sink and I usually use my sprayer um, this right here for me to show you guys exactly what I do is a little bit more convenient for me as opposed to transporting plants from one room to another and also too I want to kind of like control the infestation as much as possible so I don't want to really be moving these plants all about throughout the house so this right here is just water um, for me you guys I love just using plain water and a good vigorous spray sometimes to knock those buggers off um, That's one of the things that I do, just to spray. And then, if I see any, I will use pure alcohol, of course, along with my Q-tips. And I don't know why I shake it up, but I guess I do that with all my liquids. And I'm more or less just spraying some or pouring some in the lid. And I just take a look. I always want to double check. Even if I don't see any, sometimes I just go ahead and give it a wipe anyway. Um, I'm taking a look at the leaves, which I did see some underneath the leaves. You definitely want to make sure you check in the underside of the leaves and around the base where the actual leaf and the stem meets because that's where those suckers love sucking the life out of your plant babies. And I'm not sure if that's the reason why. Because this is really a, it's a beautiful plant, you guys. But it's been a slow grower for me. I haven't had it that long. You know, so I try to, I'm trying to train myself that patience again, you know, to. Okay, that's not me at least. But I still want to clean on this side. Sometimes I get the uh, perlite mixed up. I'm thinking it's a mealy. I'm about to instantly go. But it's better to be safe than sorry. And I'm just more or less. I didn't see a whole lot. 
one here, which is good. I don't know. The, the mealies, they just been really oh, taking over this growing season. I mean, in spite of me trying to spray. So, I didn't see anything else. But what I like to do, and maybe I do an overkill, but I don't even care. I'm just sick of them, honestly. I'm just going to spray my solution on it. I guess I'll let it just air dry. I'm not sure. Let me just sit her over here. Because this one, um, and sometimes if I see an infestation, I'll do the plant that's infested along with the plant that may have been sitting beside it. This right here is my Callan Chloe. And I know it was attacked by mealybugs because I've treated it before. And now I'm starting to see like the leaves are declining a little bit. So it's a very small plant. So uh, a mealy or two will definitely uh, devastate this plant tremendously. I do the same thing. I probably need to give it a drink as well. But I'm cutting off all of the leaves that I see as a potential. And let's see, do I see any mealy bugs? But this thing is so small, you guys. <laughs> um, it's rock hard. I probably need to give it some water too, bone dry. It came, I brought it in this. This is kind of cute. But it is small, which requires me to have to um, water it quite often. So I think I do see a couple of mealies. Oh, shoot. Dang. Well, at least it wasn't bleach. Boy, I would have been pissed. I would have messed my shirt up. But anyway, I see I just want to cut. And I'll sanitize that again. Dang it. Um, yeah, let me see if I can show y'all. This It's been on this plant a lot. Y'all see that? And oh, it's just oh, such annoying. So freaking annoying. So I will, I'd like, if I see them out in the open, I try to just get them. I probably will. Let me, matter of fact. Yeah, they see them buggers. You know you got them when you see them kind of explode a little bit. I feel like I really got to stay on them like every time you turn around like it seems like every other few days you gotta keep checking that's the only thing about it like you can't you can't sleep on them you just cannot you just can't sleep on them man I'll tell you they are just give it a drink now <laughs> this is just water in here anyway in case y'all was wondering gave it a good drink a good soak at least let's see I feel like it's soaked I may actually have to let it sit in uh, water as well since it's so small and I do another quick after I do that I kind of like look over it again to see if I see any my sprayer for the most part I notice will knock it off but Cal and Chloe's they're just as bad as Hoyas honestly they got so many cracks and crevices that they can actually hide in kind of gotta be vigilant I feel like I need to 
get some form of a <laughs> microscope. <laughs> So what I usually do after I do is I try, you guys. I'm not always successful, honestly, because life, life, and other things come into play that really, like, throw off your whole schedule sometimes with your plants, and that's where the slip-up can come. And it's okay, you know? It's okay when you have to live your life and not cater to your plants all the time. That's just, that is also part of a plant parent it doesn't mean that you're a bad plant parent it's just it is what it is right so let's see okay and with this one because it's so small and have all these things and cracks and crevices I will use this this is earth earth alleys three-in-one insecticide, miticide, and fungicide. I think I've introduced this to y'all before. Um, something that I'm trying out new this year. Um, it's supposed to be uh, safe um, for organic gardening. So, I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know how safe it is because it do have a smell, kind of strong odor. But I, I feel like with the small crevice ones, I do want to, yeah, it does have like this, I don't know, mm. <laughs> it's a strong scent. And on the back, just so that you know, even though it's organic, it's supposed to control aphids, white flies, mealybugs, mites, powdery mildew, um, downy mildew, blight, canker, and black spots. So if y'all have any of those diseases on your plants and you want to give it a try, you can definitely get this. I ordered it off of Amazon. It's not very much of a variety on Amazon, unfortunately for me at least, in regards to pest management. Um, I prefer to get the uh, Bonide, that uh, purple powder stuff that I can't think of the name of right now. Um, but yeah, so this one right here, you guys, is also, this is my Hoya Wyetii, the variegated one. And just this year, I've been experiencing some issues with the um, mealybugs as well. I've been really trying to stay on top of this one because it is such a super slow grower. And I don't have, I don't want to lose this plant. I really don't to it. And it's so many different, like, long stems. Usually, I try to, and that's what it is, it's infested again. It just keeps, the mealies just keep coming back on this darn plant. And it's really annoying because I actually, um, I'm going to actually, every time I water this plant, I give it a spray down. So, I don't understand why. And I mean a vigorous spray down, but I guess I'm going to have to, every time I water this plant, I'm going to have to do what I'm doing now, which is spray it. I do, I do realize sometimes water just is not enough. And I'm doing this particular solution because the, again, this plant is dainty. It got so many cracks and freaking crevices. Is an absolute disaster for your Hoyas with these mealybugs. I'm not even gonna lie. So I'm just spraying it just so I can get into it. Mm. So freaking annoying. I know I sprayed some off. Also, too, I'm gonna have to put this down for a sec and get in here again um, just to be on the safe side because I really, I really love this plant, you guys, and I really don't want to lose it because it's took him, it's taken me forever to get to the length that it is in. 
So if I would have to cut, it would be a sad day for me. Yeah, that's a mealy right there. And I knew something was going on with the plant. I was sitting over there in uh, my other chair. And all it took was actually me just looking over at the plant. And I was like, okay, this the leaves just looked funny a little bit. Um, I usually know, after a while, you know, when you have your plants in your collection for a while, you do tend to notice how they're doing. And the leaves just did not look right to me. And so when I did a close inspection, inspection again, of course, I saw a mealy and I was like, oh, ah, so just, oh, so disappointing when you have to deal with it. And see, I was doing so good for a few years, honestly. And also it's messing with my um, blooms too. I'm about to do something that I don't want to do. I'm trying to, I don't want to cut the blooms because I'm not trying to set the plant back in any way. But I know this uh, must have been some kind of like, I guess mealies on the bloom. The bloom looked like it was being sucked out for dear life as well. And I could have cut the bloom off, but honestly I don't want to guys. I'm too afraid that it might, like, set the plant back. Y'all let me know, what's, what's y'all pest of the year for this growing season? And if, if you've ever experienced pests, which I believe you should if you were a plant parent, um, which one, yeah, here it is. See, this is where, it's, where it becomes really annoying and you got to really look I'm gonna show you guys and that's the thing with the Hoyas it's literally I can't even let's see if I can hold it up so y'all can see how easy it is for them to hide up in the cracks it's like ah you really gotta look you really gotta look and so I guess that's where it goes wrong a little bit, even with spring. Sometimes spring just don't get it. But I can say I've been really good with trying to at least spray my plants down. If not every watering, at least every other. Especially when it comes to the Hoyas because I try my best not to have to do what I'm doing right now. And I'm just, yeah, that's another. Is that a meal? Is it? No, I think that was something else. But yeah, let me know which pest is the bane of your existence. <laughs> which one is getting on your nerves this growing season? Is it mealies or something else? And also, too, which pest? I mean, of course, we would all prefer to not have a pest at all. But honestly, in reality, which pest would y'all prefer to have? <laughs> Out of all the pests, if that's a even a good question, even to ask. Yeah, this thing is, yeah. They are trying to. And another thing too, mealies will blend in. I noticed with some of the variegation. Set one. I don't even know yet. They be even on the peduncles. That's the thing that kills me. You wait so long to see the bloom. I mean, at least it's, it's actually, I've actually witnessed the bloom this year for this plant. Because it's like, I don't know if it like bloomed last year. Didn't do it last, the growing season before last and now it's doing it this time. Mm, I don't know. So, uh, now you, you get paranoid though once you... Every dot you see, you assume that it's a mealy, and sometimes it's not. It's something else, like perlite or something. Okay, what is this? Okay, I see. You definitely was in the crack. Look at that. Is that a mealy? Yeah, let me make sure it's dead, though. Die, you little bugger. Ugh.
Tell me I gotta put my glasses on to really see in these crevices. Uh, maybe I do. When y'all have mealies too, and you're doing this, like, and let's have a real conversation. How, like, how many days do you go by or you let it go before you actually inspect your plants again? Do you actually wait till it's time to water again? And given where you are in the world and how fast your plants is using, that would traditionally or typically be, I guess, one every seven to ten days. Do you do it then every time you water or as far as checking it if it's already been infested at one point in time with um, pests? Okay, let's see. I think I might have gotten all of the... I have Nemo solution here, but again, uh, to me it seemed like it works for a preventative measure, not really for killing it. At least it seemed like that way in my pup, in my opinion. Um, another thing that I've noticed too, and I've been trying to, that's probably why I've, I've actually done this and I do different things each time. I don't want the plant to get immune to the, if that make any sense. I don't even know if that's a real thing, but it's a living thing. That's the way I was thinking. You know, you take something over time, you start getting immune to it as living things do, such as human beings. And so that was my thought process with it. So I'm about to do, like I said, I do overkill from time to time, but I also do overkill depending on the plant type. These were bigger leaves. Me doing what I just did would have been probably okay, but I'm going to actually spray the neem wool on here too. I guess it's okay. I'm not putting it outside, even though it's kind of a sunny day today. This stuff stinks too, I'm not going to lie. But over time, you do get used to it. It does stink. Shoot, the smell should kill the bugs for real. <laughs> Outside of whatever chemicals in there, because it's killing me. <laughs> okay, so I think she's okay for now. Another chilling. You know what? Let me. Something is. I go with guts, gut feelings. Something's telling me to spray this down with it too. The undersides and over the top. Since I'm doing it anyway. I don't know. Well, mm, let me leave my cow and Chloe B. Okay, so this right here is my another Hoya. I think when I was doing another video yeah i really i like this pot it's so cute <laughs> she is really cute in here but anyway i think i was doing another video you guys and i was getting some plants from over there in the area and i noticed that this one had a mealy bug on it and i said oh time to treat it i don't know do y'all see it see her so annoying annoying when you see it but yet satisfying when you eradicate it but she's a nice fat juicy one too just oh so i definitely want to since this is a small hoya i mean i don't know what variety it is Y'all have been saying that it could, it is a princess. I think, I'm not sure you guys, I don't know. It wasn't labeled as anything. You know how they have like this foliage. 
<laughs> like, why do they do that, honestly, you guys? Like, <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, it's crazy foliage. Like, what does that do? You know, how does that help us in the plant community identify the plant? You know, sometimes you could be buying duplicate plants uh, and not even know it, fooling around with these names, honestly. <laughs> so since it's just a little bit of foliage, I'm using the water first. Kind of play it by ear. It's not like I do the same thing every time. I really follow my gut with comes to the pests. Um, for the most part, I do try to though when I do my Hoyas because I don't I don't have mm, The ones I know that can probably potentially have pests. I don't I try to be aggressive with the Management of it I do uh, spray my plants down a lot a lot of times my small especially my smaller Hoyas. I do um, mm, That's it I do try to spray them every time I give it a drink. And I think I've already told you guys that. Okay, so. Not a lot here. It was looked like it was just that one mealy on there. Thank goodness. But again, don't underestimate it. Just one more than likely it might be another that you just don't see in cracks and crevices. And I've been having problems with my phone, boy. I tell you the life of a, um, being a YouTuber, <laughs> the challenges anyway. Anyway, I gotta keep a cautious eye on the camera. I've been having this problem all day today. I've been doing like um, multiple videos to stay on top of my content. Um, okay. So, this one, you know, it's like, because she's been doing a lot of blooming here and there. Even a little bloom right there, if y'all could see it. So, this can become quite messy sometimes. Hence why I usually traditionally do it in the kitchen sink. But, like I said, I'm trying to involve you guys a little bit more into other things and it is the weekend you guys so i kind of do some of these plant chores majority if i'm able to during on the weekend because i work during the week and sometimes if i see something that needs immediate attention i will try to take care of it um even if it's during a weekday, it's not like I say, okay, plant care solely on um, the weekends. Because I like to do other things on the weekend if I can. I like to spend time with my husband. Do some catch up with him during the week. Because sometimes life gets in the way and I have to do so much stuff, you know, we don't really be having. It seems like my husband and I, we don't have enough time to dedicate to each other. So I do try to, we do try to, you know, uh... Uh, what, what do you want to call it? Date night? <laughs> On the weekends? Or catch up? We're like, we try to, try to catch up. Because I'd be, child, I'd be worn out. I ain't going to lie. Uh, you know, uh, since, uh, you know, I'm a caregiver with my husband, you know, you never realize how much a person does until... They're not able to do it, if that makes sense. So, like, really, I'm really doing a lot throughout the week. So, to accommodate the lack thereof. And so, I don't really have the time that I would like to have. Okay, I'm just looking at these vines. You know, it says snow caps, but really it's not that much snow on them for real. And I don't know if I need to give it more light. I mean, she's hanging on my wall behind me. So she's literally like eight feet away from the, all the windows that's in here. I don't think I can really give her any more light than what the heck she's getting. I don't know. Do I need to do 
this um one of you guys i think i talked about um and please you know share your thoughts on it um i i believe i was talking about my variegated lipstick plant that i have hanging in here as well and one of you had made a mention about it's a possibility that I could be giving her too much light. And so I'm actually going to, um, I want to test that theory out. Um, and so I do plan on taking her out of here and probably putting it in not so much of an intense light. And I'm wondering, is it the same? Could it be the same with this Hoya Snowcat? I don't know. Maybe. What I do know about this Hoya, which is quite different from all my other Hoyas, is this one is a thirsty girl. She's a thirstier girl. Another thing that I'm noticing too about Hoyas, you guys, let me know what your, your thoughts on this too, is, you know, some of them, honestly, if not almost all of them, I'm, I'm watering them a little bit more than uh, what you would consider to not to. Like, they require, I think, a little bit more water than we think as far as drying out. I mean, it must be some truth to it because a lot of you guys, some of y'all, just from communicating with y'all, y'all grow y'all Hoya like either in Lekka or Pond and stuff. And they gotta, you know, they, that's obtaining moisture and things like that. So, you know, probably some truth to that. Let's see. So I am glad I am doing this now. Mm. Probably later, I think my husband and I, we're going to probably watch a movie. Uh, yeah. I'm a movie buff, you guys. I kind of, I love watching movies in my spare time. I really would want to get, I really do want to get back into reading books, but I don't have time. Actually, the only book that I've been reading and I've been trying to really get into the meat and potatoes of it is the Bible, honestly, you guys. But I really want to get into doing a little bit more reading. It's just, guys, I have too many hobbies and it's just not enough time in the day. I mean, really, it's not enough time in the day. Did I just break that? Shoot. I'm so sorry, babies. Dang it, I broke the babies off. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Let's see. Just looking once over. It's just too, it's way too many cracks and crevices for this particular plant, you guys. My goodness. Oh. And you know, also too, with my pest management, because I have so many plants, I do it in segments. So I'm not going to run myself ragged trying to uh, get to every plant. Man, shoot. When you got to start doing all that, honestly, for me, it start taking the joy out. I love caring for my plants, but it has to be in doses. I can't be just doing everything for the plants all the time. You're looking good. Hmm. Yeah, I'm a sprayer with uh, the neem oil too. As a preventative, I don't know. Stuff does stink. This, yeah, this thing be having my sunroom lit up, y'all. <laughs> it lights it up, and not in a good way. I mean, you get used to the smell, but it's not something you say you want to definitely be a part of. Okay, so I'm going to do this one last plant. And I feel great that I am getting something accomplished with these plant babies. Now, the last one, you guys, I'm just doing as a preventative. I did not see anything, but because she was beside this one right here, and I don't want anything to happen to her. I'm going to do it anyway. And this is just my Hoya uh, Matilde. I haven't seen any pest on her. 
and I don't want to. Um, and she's been fairly healthy. So what I'm going to do, because I don't see any, I'm going to spray her with water first. Just to spray her down. And, yeah. Okay, her, yeah, her leaves are super hard. So she doesn't need a drink. So I think I just gave her a drink maybe a couple of days ago. Now I think about it. Because I do let her... I let her dry completely out this for you. I really do love this for you. Oh, these leaves are beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I would love to get the serpents. That plant is just a little bit too pricey for me right now for it to be known as a finicky plant. Um, let me know. Do y'all have uh, the serpents and is it easy care? I heard that it can be a little tricky. Like, is it a, like a, is it a diva? Does it need like high humidity or something? I'm trying to stay away from, since I don't have no cabinet or anything that's going to like hold humidity, like this room is my cabinet as far as humidity goes. And, mm, I don't know, is it, letting it drip, drip, drippity drip. Yeah, so I don't want to spend a whole lot of money on a plant that's so fussy and it winds up dying within a matter of days. I've learned my lesson with that mayhem, too. That's not a good thing to do, either. So, uh, You know, another thing I need to do, too is y'all remember when we went outside and I kind of like did a mid-year check-in or mid-growing season check-in with my wall of Hoyas. I never did get to the plants that's been down at the bottom yet. Um, and more than likely, I'm going to have to probably do that inside of here. I know that one I did like outside. Well, like, but again, you guys, this summer has just been something else as far as the heat and the humidity. And because the uh, mosquitoes just, they just love eating me and making me their everyday meal till I just don't want to be out there. So I may actually have to do my, the ones with the plants that I have actually on the deck base of the ground out there, or whatever you want to call it, deck. Um, I may have to actually bring it inside the house to actually treat and just do a quick review of how well they're doing or if they need anything. Okay, I feel like I did a very, I did an overkill with the spray, but I also feel like, like I said, I don't see anything. I definitely um, got real good into the cracks and crevices. I feel like I need to spray this with neem oil just in case. I don't want anything to spread on her. Again, I love this plant so much, you guys. I love her. Like, oh, dang, man, I love this plant. I ain't funny. This one really tugs at my heartstrings for some reason. I think because it checks off the, I love the way that it hangs. I think it checks that off. Um, I love dark green leaves. I love small, dainty, round leaves. It gives me like a whimsical feel and vibe. It really is, I don't know, something about this plant, it like kind of like take me to a, a place of peace mentally. And I don't know why I always associate peace with um, childhood or being childlike. I just feel like when we was a child, we didn't have much to worry about. It was almost like as peaceful as it was going to get. And now that you're into adulthood and life be life, and it just takes over everything as far as some form of peace, if that makes any sense. But anyway, I digress. So this is it. I'm just plopping her in here. 
And what I'm going to do, you guys, is I'm just going to clean up a little bit here. And I'm letting these plants sit on this table. And I'm going to let them air dry before I put them back in their perspective places. Also, what I'm going to do, too, off camera, is some of these plants I've had sitting on the table that's over here underneath my Sansi light. I'm going to take, um, I'm going to spray the table down and wipe it down before I actually put the plants back on it just so I can make sure that the area that I'm putting it in has been sanitized as well to just prevent as much infestations as possible. I don't know if that means anything in theory, but I am going to do that just so that I can give myself peace of mind. So yeah, this pretty much was a quick video, I believe. Um, taking care of my pests, this is what I do, especially at least with the male leaves, you know, I do wipe down my bigger leaves, but with the smaller leaf variety such as this, I'm doing multiple spray downs and I'm really getting into the cracks and cracks and crevices of the plant. Hopefully it will kill it off and they stay at bay and my plants can stay healthy and they'll start thriving and growing more. But yeah, keep in mind you guys, if you love foliage as much as I do and you love listening to planty things, definitely subscribe to this channel if you have not. If you have subscribed already, thank you so much for your support. And don't forget you guys to keep pushing those thumbs up. Push them up. It helps my channel. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day wherever you are in the world. And until next time, guys, much love. i see y'all later in the next plant journey of Pam. <laughs> Bye, guys.